whatever. So can we go back to this Tony Khan interview from today? Because a lot of sure. people are talking about it. So oh, yeah. I have I have the full quote. I it's on it's on the website. Uh AEW, this is Tony Khan. AEW, we've been doing this for five years. We are the most successful sports startup since the AFL pre-merger. There has not been a challenger brand that has gained a, as much. A, a, let's see, let's see. AFL pre-merger. Let me think about this one. I mean, actually, I mean, I when I did research, that's what I came up with too. But but mm -hmm. um that know. that that's what you wrote. You've literally written I I, pro I, pro I, pro I probably I mean I probably wrote that before he used it, yeah. yeah. Because they were, you know, like are they today? You know, it's like um I mean, I guess we know when they if they if the you know the TV deal comes in, but um you know, whatever. It's, it's arguing semantics that, that aren't isn't that important right now. So there's not been a challenger brand that has gained as much market share as AEW in many, many, many years. We are like the Pepsi of pro wrestling, and we're up against a really evil juggernaut. WWE is our competitor. That's who we're facing. AEW is like the Pepsi of pro wrestling. WWE is like the Harvey Weinstein of pro wrestling. And I'm really proud of what we do down here. Yeah, I mean, but the thing is, is like the hosts were when when he's when he used Harvey Weinstein, it was um, they were very uncomfortable with that, you know. I mean, the, I'm the the announcers like they were, were sort of shocked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what it reminded me of, um, see if this reminds you. You you remember remember when we interviewed Kota Bushi? Yes. You know that I'm not going to go into detail, but you remember that one moment in that interview. Wasn't that like to me? As soon as I saw that, I was, oh my god, that's the new Japan officials when when I interviewed Kodo Ibushi. <laughs> They're just freaking out, you know. So okay, here here's my question, and I thought I know a lot of people wanted him to wear the neck brace on TV. That that they were just hoping because what it what it I guess to the AEW fans, it's like he's really leaning into this, like you know, he's really well, showing us that he's well, invested. Well, well, you know, the thing is, is like. Everybody saw this as the Andy Kaufman angle, okay? And the Andy Kaufman angle, which which was successful for what it was 40 years ago, 42 years ago. But the thing is, it's like it's remembered so fondly. So that's the prototype. And it's kind of like what it was anyway, you know, other than, you know, it was a different kind of a pile driver, but it was the same mentality. Yeah. So it's like he's, you know, Andy Kaufman, you know, went everywhere with that neck brace except on Cheers, you know, like when, when he... um was it not shoes i mean in taxi sorry yeah yeah taxi taxi sorry but so anyway when he was on taxi you know he wanted to wear it that season and the people and the producer text said no you are not <laughs> doing this i don't know if people know that story but it was like you are not doing this on our show and and so he didn't but um he did it everywhere else and um so yeah that's what they wanted and he went and he did it on national tv on you know what i mean with everybody watching you know when they're doing the picks and it's like it's so cool he's selling it so so that's where the the plus was yeah. and a lot of people were so excited but then when he did the, the the weinstein thing it's just like you know that line and i mean the the thing is is like um like if he said um instead of wwe if he said you know vince mcmahon Mm -hmm. I mean, that would have probably been okay, and maybe even people would have cheered when he said that. But with WWE, you know, it's like WWE has done a, a great, great job of, um, I mean, you know, basically PR and basically, you know, telling people that, you know, that was the bad, bad, all the bad's gone. Right, you know what right. I mean? And, and so now it's someone who's bringing it up in the sense of, that's the company and i mean it was i mean like if you look at historically the company um you know it's, it's like it's like it it's not unfair in in many ways of what the company was but the whole idea that everybody wants to go with is that new company you know all those people are gone or not you know but not even all those people are gone but it's it's nick Khan and and paul you know and more paul you know he's, he's the hero because it's like he's, you know, he's not that sleazy person and everything like that, that that did all that stuff. And the sleazy guy's gone and and we're getting our better wrestling because the the old guys like, uh, you know, he was out of touch and blah, blah, blah. And now we got the guy who's doing a great job and he and he is doing a great job. You know, I mean, again, business doesn't lie. 
you know, I mean, he's, he's, you know, all those sellouts, those, that doesn't lie. But um, I think that a lot of people, you know, wanted that. And then Tony saying that really, you know, pissed a lot of people off. And I wish he, I wish he hadn't done it. You know, it's like, you don't, um, yeah, I just, you know, I, I just didn't think it was the right thing to say there. Um, you know, I mean, you could, I mean, I'm sure, you know, he's in a situation also where everyone's always going to attack him. So there's still going to be people who are going to be mad at him just for using the neck brace. But I think that a lot of the core fans were very happy. He did do the neck brace thing. My issue with his comment or his, his statement on the show today is he's, he's he, the reason he gets on TV is because he's wearing the neck brace. If he's not wearing the neck brace, nobody gives a crap. Like that's the vehicle to get him on there. Right. So I get that. The problem with his interview was he was playing wacky pro wrestling promoter and pro wrestling out, pro wrestling character pro wrestling character but he was doing an over the top interview where we are in this pretend universe that what happened on aw tv is real and then at the same time he's trying to talk about business and so is he still the wacky pro wrestling character and then he on top of that, he throws the, the Harvey Weinstein line. So, again, are we wacky pro pro wrestling character or is it the real Tony Khan? Because there's three statements in there. And if he's wacky pro wrestling character, the last two statements that he did, there's no power in them because we're not supposed to take them seriously. So I wish he would have kind of picked a lane and stayed in that lane. I don't uh, think he should have been I don't think he should have been wacky pro wrestling character on on uh, a real news show. I mean, he could I think he could have worn the brace. I think he could have I think he could have gone and sold wink wink the angle and people would have accepted it and plugged your you you plug your company and when you're on which he did do, he did plug it. And um but I wouldn't I wouldn't have talked about I would not have talked about the opposition. Um right now i i mean at all because you don't need to you know you've got to get your your stuff in gear there's times to fight back and they have to fight back because if they don't this is the reality if you don't mm -hmm. fight back in that situation you're you're punching back and they will bully you and bully you and bully you and they do that um you know and they're very good at, at doing that in very sly ways and i have seen you know some people have figured this one out i mean i i live it so i know it you know what I mean? Because I know it because, you know, again, I'm getting everything from both sides all the time. I know I know that stuff. But it's just to me, it's like it's not a big deal because it's like it's always been like that. I, I did that all through the 90s. I did all through the 80s. You know what I mean? It's just part of the, the game. Some people like they've never been through this one. And they're just like, oh, you know, it's so low class. And it's like it's freaking competitive business. I don't know if it's low class or high class. But it's like every freaking Bill Watts and Jim Crockett and Vince McMahon and and you know Eric Bischoff and and Dixie Carter, we always got it. We always got it. And it's like, but for whatever reason, like I don't know if it's a new fan base or whatever, but they think that it's wrong. And it's like, it's just what this business has been built on. Um, and you got it. You know, again, you got to fight back. But this was not the time. To me, right now is not the time for AEW to be fighting back with WWE. This is time for AEW to be um, just pushing AEW and and trying to build momentum for AEW. And don't worry. I'm not going to say don't worry about WWE, but, but um, you know, if WWE wants to say stuff, um, you know, you could fight. But it's like, I, th I think maybe the thing is because they did, um, you know, they did that um, Osprey thing. And they did that, you know, the punk thing and everything like that. And it's almost like, okay, they've already done it. Leave it alone for a while. And then they do it again. And, um, you know, there's there's little things, you know, I mean, like with, um, I mean, I mean, really, is anyone, I mean, I know saw some people mad about Pat McAfee, but it's like Pat McAfee was just, I, I didn't, like, I, I saw the Pat McAfee clip. It didn't bother me in the slightest. You know, it's just, you know, he, did you see the clip? I didn't see the McAfee thing. I mean, the the only clip I saw was him, you know, talking about the draft and go, oh, Tony Khan's doing this, selling it because, you know, he did this thing and just brought it up. And it wasn't like he knocked it or anything, even though some people will take it because it's a WWE announcer. But he was just being the Pat McAfee personality. So I had no problem. I mean, the... Um, the McAfee Waller did the same thing at a UFC show a while ago. Remember? What? I think, I think it... Uh... 
I want it was it an NXT storyline, but he showed up ringside with like Vince and Stephanie, I think, and maybe Nick Khan, and he was wearing a neck brace. This is years ago at yeah. UFC show. This uh, I've seen that photo kind of running out there. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? Wrestlingobserver.com. You have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.